Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It's Coach's Corner time in Louisville. We are joined by the head volleyball coach, Christina Freed. Coach, when, when you look at what this season means, obviously your second year as head coach, seventh year overall coaching in, in volleyball, uh, and you've got seven seniors to uh, to make sure that they're leading the way. What is How does this year compare to the other ones that you've had so far? Um, well, last year was... It was kind of like a rebuilding year almost because you had Coach Kelly come on and he's been coaching. I forget how long he was here for, maybe like three, four years. And then um, Ron Slipkowski was the varsity coach when I was JV. And um, he was only here for a year and then I took over. So it's kind of rebuilding everything, rebuilding the relationships, rebuilding the team, finding varsity players and everything. So Coming into this season, it's just we wanted to make a good start because last year we had a winning record, kind of. So we want to just make sure we get a winning record this year also. To be able to establish, right? You talked about the recruiting and, and, and taking care of, of rebuilding the program, but to establish it this year, you're already off to a nice start, 1-0. Um, what things need to happen? I mean, leadership style. Obviously, you got to show up and play, but you know, what things in your mind are you telling your team this needs to happen to, to take us to where we need to go. Well, over the summer, we did a lot of team building stuff. So I tried to make the girls come together a lot more and just get to know each other, become a team, even like JV and varsity work together and just become one. So it was just a lot of building relationships and trust with everybody. Um, since I have seven seniors, it takes up all the spots on the varsity team, but we also have like juniors stepping in and some sophomores. Um, but it's just a lot of trust with each other and just making sure we know who's doing what. So the seniors are doing a really good job with leading everybody and just making sure everybody's ready for the game. Everybody knows what they're doing at practice. I don't know. It's a good bond this year, I think. Chemistry is certainly important, as you just alluded to. For you, I mean, how do you break it down in your mind? Okay, we need 33% chemistry, 33% skill. I mean, it's like that old uh, song, you know, all that all that stuff goes into it. Chemistry, what does it rank for you, I guess, is the question. Is it, is it at the top of the shelf here? Uh, is it is it kind of in the middle? Where do you need to have that chemistry? And how do you, I mean, is it is it movie nights? Is it just practice? How do you build that chemistry in a setting with seven seniors? Um, I think chemistry was really important this year because last year there was just a few girl drama, which happens on every team. But every team, yep. Yeah, so we were just trying to stay away from that this year. And I think... I mean, we had no issues over the summer. Everybody seemed to get along. We did, we canceled practice one day and surprised all the underclassmen with um, lunch at the park. And then um, some one of the girls volunteered to have something at their grandparents' house and then they had a pool. So they all went over there. And recently at like our last summer practice, we all went to Cane's after practice and ate dinner together. And then I think we want to start to have like what football does, how they have pasta nights, but maybe just choose it maybe once a month. Because I mean, since volleyball games are a lot during all the time, you know, so you can't just have dinner every night at somebody's house. So breaking bread seems to be the way to to make sure that the the team is uh, bonding. Which I I listen as as a guy, I love being able to eat number one and to eat with my teammates is is special. But for you, I mean. This has to be a unique situation where, where you're rebuilding one year and then the expectations are through the roof because Louisville as a whole, their ex expectations are to win and, and constantly compete for the MVAC title. You have to, to set the realistic expectations of, hey, new coach, but I don't want to, to set them too low. How do you kind of find your, your balance in that of, listen, we want to compete, but we also – want to make sure that there are realistic expectations every game, every practice, and every time these kids think about playing and, and suiting up for, for the Lady Rocket. Yeah, well, I try to make practice game-like. So however you're going to act at a game, I expect it at practice. Um, but I don't know. I'm still finding my way as a coach because this is only my second year as varsity head coach, and I've 
been watching like all these other coaches I've worked with. But I mean, like at Lordstown, um, the girl that I coached with, she was new to it all too. Like she knew the sport and everything, but she was new to coaching. And then I only spent one year with Ron. So then I would, I'm still just trying to build on how to just get the team mentally ready, I guess, sure. and everything. But I mean, we're just trying to make sure that they understand that we want to win this game. So what we started to do is um, at home games, all the girls put in a picture of somebody they're going to dedicate their whole season to. So maybe that's like motivation for them to really get, get it going at games. That's awesome. I like that idea. Um, yeah. So I guess that, that leads to another question I have. You, you've had these coaches. Obviously, you, being able to be a part of this game for a long time, um, where did you pick up pieces of your coaching and how did you get into it? I mean, coaching is not something that people necessarily raise their hand for anymore. What drives you as a coach and, and where do you get your inspiration from? Well, my family were all a bunch of coaches. So my aunt coached me in soccer since I was four years old. And then her husband coached my cousins in soccer then um, my mom became a coach. And then when I was in high school, I was helping coach my sister's team to where I've been coaching ever since I left high schools, even though it's not volleyball, like I've coached lacrosse at Canfield. I've coached like soccer at Mohawk. There's like a bunch of things I've done. So coaching's in my blood a bit, but I'm not saying I'm the best coach, but I'm still learning and everything. But my aunt really inspired me she understands the sports and she loves what she does. And I think um, her and then also my cross country coach in high school, like I just always wanted to be what they were, just like someone inspirational, someone for the kids to look up to. You stole the next question. So I'll have to pivot here. Um, You know, what kind of coach do you want people to remember you for? I mean, you said inspirational, but like if you had to, to, to explain your leadership style, what would it be and why? Um, I kind of like looking at the show, Ted Lasso, how he is. He just wants to make sure everybody becomes the best versions of themselves. And that's what I want to do. But like I said, I'm still learning that I'm young and I'm going to make mistakes also. But um, it's just I just want something for them to learn with the sport and then take it outside and just life lessons like you can always use volleyball as a life lesson. So mentally you're going to have your off days. So when you're in the real world and maybe work, there's a lot of stuff going on. You just got to find a way to get yourself out of it and come on top. Ted Lasso. So does that mean (laughs) that you're going to start bringing in cookies for Mr. Stanton and Mr. Ballone at some point? Oh yeah. Get them the biscuits. I don't know if they'd want my baking, but <laughs> I could try. Are, are you, do you like baking? I mean, I don't have time. I feel like I feel like volleyball takes up my time. But I mean, if I bake, I'm sure it wouldn't be bad. Is there one particular dish that that you really uh, feature? Like, the, if you had to bake something or, or make something for someone, what would it be and why? Um, I don't know. I've tried to bake a pie, but I'm not good at the crust. But... <laughs> I don't know. I, I like to watch the baking shows. But I think everybody I never does. really tried from scratch. Do you, uh, is there a meal that, that you're particularly good at? Oh, my family, we make tuna noodle casserole. That's probably the best meal I'll make. I put that's a lot right. of Creole in there. That's, that's the money salty. dish. I love it. Um, let's talk about these seniors. You got seven seniors. What, what do they bring to the table? And what should, be the, what should they be very proud of? Uh, of the legacy they they hopefully leave behind this year at Louisville? Oh, they're so good. Ever since I've, like, came to Louisville and watched them play, they've been phenomenal since, I want to say they were sophomores when I first started here, and they're so good. But I have, like, Elizabeth Rossi. She is my middle, and she came from soccer. So my first year here was her first year playing volleyball. And she's come a long way since then. Then I have um, Morgan Lewis. Last year, she kind of didn't get the opportunity she should have gotten. 
but she's getting it this year. So she's going to be my outside and she has amazing hits and she may be quiet, but she knows how to lead. Um, then I have Ariana Romano. She's an amazing player. She thankfully does, put, let, lets me put her wherever I need her. Since she's been playing middle for a little while until all of our players come back, but she's usually my outside hitter and she does great. And no matter what position last year, I even had her setting sometimes. Uh, Hadessa Rivera, she's my libero. She's so good. <laughs> she went to camps last year after the season was over and um, didn't get to have great opportunity over the summer because she's been sick and she goes on a lot of vacations and church missions, but she will do anything you ask. She gives it 120% every day. And then I have um, Elena Lopez. She This is her first year actually playing varsity and she does really well in the back row. She likes to kick a lot, but it's okay because <laughs> I would probably do the same thing. <laughs> My soccer would come out of me, but she's such a determined child. Like she gets things done too in the back row. And then Alyssa Kuzan, she's my setter. She's been setting for varsity since I've known her. And she's really, really good at that spot. She gets, she makes plays happen. Everybody is so comfortable off of her sets now. So. What's uh, out of, of that group of seniors, what's the one word that you would hang on, on them um, to describe them best? Just determined. They really want it. They've been talking about it since last year, what they expect out of this season. So they're determined to have good games and win. And then if they lose, they want to bring it up next time. I love it. All right, last question for you, I promise. I know you're at school, so we're, we're taking you away from the kids. We don't want that. <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier you have them kind of submit a picture of, of, of the game that or the person that they're going to dedicate that particular game to. If you could do the same thing, and I don't know if you do or not, who would you put a picture of and why? Um, well, I got this idea from the Lordstown coach that I coached with. She started it, and then I brought it here this year. But every year I've been choosing someone different, and this year I chose my cousin Ricky because he's been going through a lot just with his own personal life since, I don't know, like 15 years now. And he's just now making – like good improvements. And I think it's just something you can learn from that no matter how low you can go, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Like you can come up from anything if you really put your mind to it. So I chose him to dedicate all my games to. That's incredible. Uh, you will be thinking about Ricky as well. We, we're thinking about you, Coach, and, and your team. Uh, 1-0 so far. We're excited to see where this where, where this leads you. And we're certainly uh, behind you and rooting for you. Thank you so much for the time today and, and best of luck moving forward. Oh, thank you.